comfort is defined as a state of physical ease and freedom from pain or constraint. The entrepreneur knows not these words, but rather the excitement, the fight, the growth and expansion into the marketplace. There are no shortcuts to success. There are no shortcuts to financial freedom or to the growth of your business. That's why I've created the Comfort Killers. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good dusk. <laughs> Whenever you are watching, it is always the perfect time. I am Stacy A. Cross, and there is no E in my name, and I have with me a doctor's in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Tasha Parker Meredith, and um, writer, author, business leader, leader, minister. What else? I keep going. Army? No, no, no. Army, no, Air Force. Army, Air Force. Are yeah, you both? Retired Lieutenant Colonel. Thank you. Thank you so much for what you've done for me <laughs> and this country here, this beautiful country of America. Now, your story is so huge that we're going to dive into it, but I want to say I love the name of your book. Thank you. Didn't ask and didn't tell. So yes. we're going to get into that because right there, I think that's the core of how this all started for you, yes. right? Yes. So where did, where, where did this take place? Um, what's in this book? What, what are we going to okay, get? So this book, Didn't Ask, Didn't Tell, is yep. the life of a gay Christian soldier. Mm. And I wanted to make sure I put that gay Christian soldier Excellent. in there because um, that's kind of an oxymoron. Yeah. You know, gay Christian of course. soldier. Um, so this book came out of uh, my 25 years of service in the military. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was during the don't ask, don't tell policy. I remember that. Policy. Yeah. Um, and so I started in the military in. I was 17 years old, yep. and I think it was like 1987 or something like And so um, I, what I remember uh, vividly mm -hmm. is um, when I went to the MEP station and I was signing, you know, getting ready to sign my papers, Yes. and there's a question on there about your sexuality. Mm. And I had to lie mm. about that about my sexuality and so that was the beginning of the the title for the book let me ask um, you a question yes yes so 17 years old you're you're signing into the military life now yes there's a question on there so you are already feeling something inside you already knew who you were yes. and 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 at this point number one you had to lie did your mom already know did your yes okay so, yes so that's a great question yeah so my mom uh, asked me at the supper table when yeah. I was 14 years old okay I was 14 years old and I came in um, so to give you a little backdrop on my family yeah. um, you know we we were at church every Sunday okay Bible study yeah. on Tuesday or Wednesday yeah. vacation Bible school in mm. the summertime so you were just we were embedded in you were embedded yeah. in the church yeah so picture uh, coming into the kitchen and your mom sitting at the table mm -hmm. with a Bible on the table. Okay. <laughs> that was the, uh, the, the day, if yeah. you will, where my mom asked me if I were a lesbian. Mm. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. And now I can actually smile about it because yeah. we've gotten through that mm -hmm. and uh, my mom and I are best friends now. But yeah. that was a very um, traumatic time for me sure. personally. I'm sure. Um, because my mom and I are so close and I didn't want to lie to her. Yeah. And she's my mom. She and the, knew. And the Bible was right And the on Bible, the yeah. <laughs> that the Bible was right, right. there. Right? Absolutely. Um, so, you know, um, I told my mom the truth and uh, my mom actually said to me during that time because she was teaching me with what she knew at that time. Gotcha. And she told me, she said, well, you're going to go to hell. You're not going to see us anymore. Wow. Um, you know, uh, like, and so then she went down the road of, of maybe you just need counseling. Mm -hmm. and, you know, all of those things yeah. that happen at 14 when wow. your parent is getting you, wow. asking you about your sexuality. Yeah. Today, we live in a very different world than we did, what, 30 years yeah. ago. Um, today, kids are like, oh, hey, mom, dad, yeah, I'm gay or I'm bisexual. Yeah. And it's like, no Nothing. big deal. Yeah. Um, so that, yeah, that, that was the uh, kind of the beginning of... Didn't ask, didn't tell. tell right? But I so, did tell. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. So, yeah, so now you're in the military. You signed, you lied. Right? I lied. Straight up lied. Okay. I said no. No. 
No. And, uh, you because you knew the repercussions. Yes. And um, so yeah, the military. I remember that. Uh, uh, don't ask, don't tell. It was a huge ordeal. Yeah. yeah. And now you're in the military life. Yes. What's that like? Keeping that inside oh. the entire time. Oh, it was tough. I'm sure. Um, you know, because uh, I'm a tomboy. Yeah. If you can't tell. Yeah. Little, little buzz cut. Okay. A little bit. Yeah. Um, and so I've always been a tomboy. Yeah. Uh, I went through this phase of lipstick. You know. Didn't work, right? No. I tried it too. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. work. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. Um, so so um, it was hard for me to hide who I was. Yeah. Um, and so it was very tough. You know, I would I I have a wedding ring on now because I'm married. Yeah. But I got to the point in my career in the military that it was expected that you be married. Mm. So I would wear a ring. Oh wow. To stop the questions. Mm. Um, I would date or act like I were dating guys mm -hmm. to stop the questions. And the conversations, like you would make up a whole fairy tale around. Oh, a whole fairy tale. Yeah. And I got caught in probably so many lies. I'm sure. And I'm like, oh, did I tell him who was I dating? What? Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I remember, yeah, I remember the same thing with me, man. I had a boyfriend. No one you never, never saw him. <laughs> he didn't, no one didn't knew exist. He didn't exist. <laughs> I had to do it because, you know, you're in high school. You're yeah. this, yeah. the normal societal pressures mm -hmm. of what you should be doing. And, and I'm sure I would have a hell of a time at my prom, but I didn't go. Because sure. there was this whole thing around the prom, you know, uh -huh. the guy, the gal, the dress, the yeah. this, and I didn't want to be a part of it. So uh -huh. I'm sure, and you know, and I know the military is a little bit more strategic and structural yes. with what they uh, expect from you. Absolutely. And my thing was just outside in civilian life, so I know that there's some differences there, but I do understand that. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. So now you're in the military, yes. you're lying at like, like a buzz cut. Yeah, you're just lying. being straight. Yeah. I, someone ought to have put that Bible again for you. <laughs> but, but I understand why, because the yeah. pressure of that so now when did when did you get to that point where the, the two collide who you are and what someone expects so I uh, I came out to my mom at 14 yeah um, but I didn't like technically come out until after or just before I retired mm. um, when I started um, realizing that it was okay to be me okay um, and that came actually through writing this book. Okay. The book was very therapeutic for me. Yeah. Um, you know, spending time writing the book and just, you know, getting my thoughts right. out. Um, and so it, it collided uh, when the gray goose became too much. Mm. Um, I went through a period of um, drinking. Great Goose is my, my drink of choice. Yeah. Um, and so I went through a period of where I was depressed. Yeah. I was drinking. Um, and so in 2007, I moved to um, Atlanta. Okay. And I found a church, the Vision Church of Atlanta. I don't know if you all have heard of it, but it was the first time that I was in a a Christian environment. Well, actually, re religious environment. Period, where I was accepted. Mm -hmm. I could wear my tie or mm -hmm. my bow tie. Mm -hmm. I could wear this, and I was accepted. Mm -hmm. Everything was good, and so that kind of um, began. Uh, the pr that was the beginning of where I am today, and that's where I started realizing, like, I can't live on the three three core values that we have yeah. now. I can't live this authentic life right. and lie at the same time. Right. And then this drinking and all yeah. of these things are kind of coming together. Yeah. And, um, you know, it one, one of the challenges with being in the military so long is I was also a military officer. Mm. And so therapy was shunned upon. Mm -hmm. And so we, we were not allowed, if you will, to, to go to therapy. Wow. Um, so when I started writing, it was therapeutic for me, gotcha. and then I actually started seeing a therapist, mm. and I just, I just realized like this person inside of me has to come out yeah. because I'm not living my life. Right. I don't know who this person is. And you know, it's what I find, um, and I, I had to go through the same tribulations, and I started writing in 2008, and it was called Get Uncomfortable, which is crazy and weird that I name a company Comfort Killers and didn't even know anything about that back in 2008. Wow. So it, it's almost like that person, you're, you're, there's so much energy and effort lying and keeping that yes. person within. Yes. That it's so free, and once that person is out and, and, and able to live freely, yes. it's like a, a different type of living. Absolutely. It's, it's so free. Yes, it's very free. Uh, yeah. So um, I, I was reading somewhere, and then someone came up to you and said, hey, listen, I need you in my documentary. Oh, yes. 
And that documentary was to talk about don't ask, don't tell yes. of the military. So, yes. and you said no. I said hell no. Hell no. Not just no. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Yeah. Uh, because I was still in the military. Yeah. And even though the documentary, it was somewhere overseas, I, I want to say it was London, yeah. the person who was doing the, the documentary. Yeah. But immediately, like, you know how you like see your life flash before you saw, <laughs> yep. saw all these things happening. I was like, oh my God, yeah. if, if, if the documentary gets out, my whole family will know, yeah. the military will mm -hmm. know, I won't get my retirement, mm -hmm. I won't get my pension, mm -hmm. and this saw my whole life change. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hell no, get away from me, right? I'm not doing yeah. this. Um, and so, uh, that weekend, I went to church mm. the next, that Sunday. Yeah. I had uh, been traveling with the military and I hadn't been to church in a while. And at the time I was a member of the Vision Church of Atlanta. Yeah. And um, it was October uh, 10th, 2010. Mm. Uh, and the, the bishop preached about treasure in the trash. And in his sermon, he talked about uh someone writing that book like there is someone who needs to hear your story mm -hmm. like your story uh is is critical to someone's oh, no. life yes. and so i will always remember that sermon and and in that moment when i i sat there in the basement of the church in the fellowship hall because yeah. i was late yeah. that day <laughs> and um, uh i said I'm gonna do it. Yeah. I'm gonna. You do made it. the decision. I made the decision that day, and I actually called. And the documentary never it, it never came to fruition. Mm. But it was just the process, just to to get my mind thinking. That's funny. It is time. That's funny because first of all, you said you went there on October 10th, mm -hmm. 2010. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. 10. Binary. Okay. And and then <laughs> it's it's funny because regardless. You were going to be okay because the documentary wasn't going to be out. Mm -hmm. But you made the decision, I don't care. I'm going to do this documentary. I'm going to find this journalist and I'm going to make sure that I'm in the documentary. I made the decision. Mm -hmm. And all the universe and God wanted you to do. Make the decision. Make the decision. Yes. Mm -hmm. Try to try to help you make the decision before. Didn't work. Right. Now 10, 10, 10. Probably at 10 o'clock because you were late. Probably. <laughs> you made the decision. Mm -hmm. Now what happened? How did you feel making that decision? And what were the, the, the next steps after making that decision? Oh, it was just, it was like a, uh, um, it was an epiphany. Mm. But it, and it was a light bulb that went off in my head, kind of like, I, I started to feel like, you know how um, in the 10X rule, if yeah. I may mention of that, course. how um, boy. Grant Cardone talks about um, success being our duty yes. and our responsibility. Yes. And so I began from that moment on thinking it's my duty mm. and responsibility to um, not just the world, but to my family mm -hmm. to tell this story and to tell my truth yep. um, so that we can kind of begin this journey yeah. of, of of, of being being free yes and so and, and it was my duty to all the men and women who served in the military yes. who were serving in silence yes. yeah. and how many people can you help see that's why I love Grant Cardone because you know you turn around and you got this little bit of thing happening just mm -hmm. a little bit of thing mm -hmm. and it's like well I could help so many people with this little bit of thing yes right just this one little just thing, a little thing. Mm -hmm. and um so that's what when I actually read that part because you said this part in your story to me you said you know it became your duty and obligation I needed to hear that even today because mm -hmm. I was I, I Siobhan was outside and I said I'm pissed <laughs> yes I said I'm pissed off yes and she's like why are you pissed said because it's my duty and obligation to get this crazy comfort killing teaching out and that caused me yeah. now to meet you that yes. caused us to get this message out yes. that caused another thing and I'm and I'm and I'm tying it together now yes and exactly what Grant said success is your duty and obligation and it's your duty and obligation to share your message share your story yes. and help millions out yes and here comes the book with your face <laughs> on the cover my face is all on I the love cover. it I love thank it you. thank you so didn't ask didn't tell now here comes this next part of your journey yes what do you do with that that freedom now what do you do with this energy what do you do with something like this book oh you know what since I wrote this book my life hasn't been the same no. like when you begin to walk in your freedom, mm. when you begin to live an authentic life, Ooh, um, big so, so when you when you begin to, to live and walk in that freedom, then you begin to impact those yes. around you. Yes. And so you really begin to you, you don't 
care about the things you used to care about. Right. You you when you realize that God values you as just who you, you are. are. Yeah. Um, then you are for me. I'm able to walk in a room and let my light shine, mm. no matter what. Yes. I'm able to wear, you know, yes. my shirt, my bow tie, yep. wear my buzz cut. Yep. And I, it has been been a blessing for me because I think other people see that, and they're like, "Wow, if you can walk in your freedom, certainly I can." I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that mm -hmm. because that's why we're doing it. And you know, one thing that I always notice is you don't know who's watching yeah. and who needs it, Yes. right? Mm -hmm. You don't know, and, and sometimes they're silent. And then you gave them that power to say, you know what, you help me out. And you're like, yes. wait a second, you, the one that, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. So I love that the fact that we're not looking now at, because in your essence of who you are, your authenticity, mm -hmm. your integrity, your honesty, who you are, mm -hmm. your true self, mm -hmm. other people are able to step out and be, who, who they are. Yes, absolutely. And I love that. It's a good feeling. I know I know it is because you say you walk around, you're uncomfortable every day because you have to step outside in a society that doesn't have you as being normal. And you're like, I'm okay with being who I am. Mm -hmm. Not that you're abnormal because we don't even know what normal is. Right, what is normal? No, what is normal anyway? <laughs> right. It's not that we're the opposite. There's right. no alternative. It's who I am. Yes, that's good. And I love that. Yeah. So now, I, and, and I had to underline it because I'm like, what is this? Uh -huh. you're, you're making an impact. You're a minister doing you're, you're, a church. Yes. <laughs> so let's talk about this because Comfort Killers, you have a virtual church. I have a virtual church, yes. And when did you start this virtual church? So we started uh, Kim VC is what we like to call it. It's mm -hmm. Kingdom International Ministries mm -hmm. Virtual Church. Mm -hmm. It's a online church. And we like to say we we bring Christ to you. Mm. We bring Jesus to your yeah. uh, computer, to your laptop, yeah. to your uh, anything that your you mobiles, have. Technology. Yeah. Where yeah. you are in the car, you're listening. Your cell phone. We yeah. we like to bring uh, the good news, if you will. Yes. It's the principles of Jesus Christ: mm. honesty, transparency, integrity. And we teach those based on. Uh, the principles of, of Jesus Christ. So we started the virtual church in 2014. Yeah. Uh, we launched November 7th yes. of 2014, and we very quickly grew, surprisingly. Yes. We grew from uh, uh, four of us, four, four, four leaders, yeah. to, to now we have well over 800 members internationally. Wow. We've got over, uh, I think the number is over 20 now. Yeah. Uh, pastors and evangelists mm. all over the world. And we, we were up to over 100,000 followers. We did that in a matter of probably two months. Wow. Uh, in 2004. So people needed this. People needed it. And I, I, you know what? It's so funny because every time I hear these numbers now, I'm like, time doesn't even matter. It doesn't even exist. Yeah. When you make that decision and, and, and you have so much intent to <laughs> yes. go out there, yes. it's almost like you eradicated the essence of time. Yes. Time doesn't exist. How many people didn't think that you were going to succeed at this virtual church? 100%. 100%. 100. Well, 99%. 99. You were the one. I was the one. <laughs> and, and my wife. Right. Uh, and my mom. Yes. So 97%. Okay, let's say 97%. Basically 100%. Right. Everybody said, you no. are crazy. crazy. What is a virtual church? church. What is online? Yeah. What is, you know, so... Um, my background is I went to school online. Yeah. So my doctorate, I, I was in uh, one of the first pilot classes mm -hmm. at the University of Phoenix. And so I'd always had this kind of fascination with t uh, technology. Yeah. And I was a research assistant in the military. So I researched what we're talking about now, artificial intelligence, mm. many years ago. But I could never talk about it. Right. But now that it's out in the open. Yeah. So I researched this stuff like 10 years ago. Right. And so I've always had this fascination with technology. Yeah. And so once I started walking in my freedom and yeah. I was able to see that, oh, it's okay to be a Christian and be gay. Yeah. Too, um, I started trying to figure out how could I combine the two. Mm. There's got to be a way to combine Jesus and technology. That's, that's the problem um, right there. And exactly. so, so that was the problem. Yep. That was the problem. Yep. I didn't know it then. Yeah. Um, but but that was the problem. So merging the two is 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 the need that mm. we met. We met that need of yes. of, of, of people because there. When you think about it, it's not just us. Um, 
the, the those of us who can pick up the phone and watch it. But we have yeah disabled people right. who can't leave the house. Mm -hmm. um, you have bedridden people mm -hmm. who can you know they can pick up their phone, but they can't physically get up and go That's um, to church. Um, so we wanted to just um, make that available. Yeah. And so our goal, our our like crazy outer space literally goal is to have church on the moon. My uh, legacy, my goal is for one day one of the astronauts will be in uh, wow. in Mars, yeah, and they will be watching Kim V C. Oh my God! That is that is the that's note. an outlandish, crazy, crazy, right? Out of this world, <laughs> outrageous. Out. <laughs> yes, you're down. You're out yeah. now. So no, but that's that's it. That's what we have to do. We have to have these astronomical, no yes. pun intended, yes. goals. <laughs> that's good, right? Astronomical yeah. goals. Yeah. And I and I and I definitely see that because the legacy, and this is this is important this is a word that's been coming up all week for me mm -hmm. this legacy that we're here on earth to mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. sometimes it doesn't it doesn't bound us to earth mm -hmm. you know oh, what I mean? that's good yes it doesn't bound us yes. to earth mm -hmm. so i love that you have taken that you unrestricted yourself from earth mm -hmm. and you're shooting for the stars oh, and that's absolutely damn <laughs> that's good stuff you gotta get you gotta get me on virtual church yeah you know, in virtualchurch.org. <laughs> so, so that was my next question. Yes. How do they find this church? How do they find you? How do they learn more about Din and Ask Din and Tell? Yes. So, um, first of all, uh, my website, my personal website, is TashaMeredith.com. Mm -hmm. Tasha with an O. Mm -hmm. uh, TashaMeredith.com. Uh, you can buy the book on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, Barnes and Nobles. Mm -hmm. It's on Apple iBooks. It's available so I want to give something to our comfort killers because I know you inspired someone out there someone is saying I need that yes okay I need that right now please email hello at the comfort killers.com the first person that takes action this is what this is about first person that takes action we are going to send you a book yes all right we're gonna send you one of these what no Get in the flow. Get in the flow. Seven principles of becoming a wealthy Christian. Yes. So I know this is talking to someone, and yes. I feel it. When I feel the energy, I, feel I it too. You feel it, right? Yes. Yes. I, and we gotta take action. So this is what I, we're gonna give you as a gift of being a comfort killer, watching this, and taking action for yourself and being. Because I want someone to, to, to change. Absolutely. I want so this I to help too. someone, and that's what we're here to do. Now let's move into the business. Because now okay, here, yes. here's the deal. Business, yes. You know, I, I want to know. Yes. Okay. 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 So okay. you're running this virtual church. Yes. As a business. As a business. You know, some people are just like, hey, listen, Ooh. come on, man. Come on. Why are you giving away the secrets, yeah. man? But you talk about being uncomfortable. Let's do it. Let me just tell you. Let's do it. So, um, if I may. Yes. The church that, the traditional church, yes. if you will. Yeah. Nothing, nothing traditional about our virtual yeah. church. Yeah. The traditional church is, uh, in my experience, has been um, not run like a business, mm. to be politically mm -hmm. correct, right? Or hiding the fact that they're or running hide, like or, a business. Or hiding the fact. Okay. Uh, it, I guess it just depends on the church. Let's get they uncomfortable. They could be hiding yeah. the fact. Okay. That's true. All right. Yes. All right. Um, so, so um, one of the the things that Elle and I we said we would do when we first started the virtual church is run it like a business. Mm -hmm. We have metrics. Uh, we have, you know, we have numbers, we yep. measure, we, we um, do what's the equivalent of 360 feedback. Mm -hmm. We want our leaders to know how they're doing yeah. uh, because that allows us to execute our strategic plan. We and, have a strategic plan. And expand, plan right? You got to know where you got to know where you are. To, you know, to, to, to keep moving forward, to absolutely. expand, baby. Mm -hmm. We run the church like a business. And um, we do that so that we can measure our success mm -hmm. and so that we can let our members and mm -hmm. followers and donors know this is where your money goes. Mm -hmm. This is what we do with I the money that. that you give to the church. I love that. Um, and, and we try to do as much as possible for free. Yeah. So we have a huge conference coming up. Um, this uh, fall in Atlanta, this Labor Day weekend, yeah. we have we've we've mirrored the the Grant Cardone approach. Yes, we have seventeen business and ministry leaders speaking in three days. Hmm. It is free. Mm. Absolutely. Are you pulling this off? Free. Are you pulling this off? The way we pull it off is that we run the church like a business. I love that. We run the church like a business. This is where your money is going. We have, um, I remember at the uh, 
the 10 X growth con, uh, uh, Damon John. Yes. When he talked about relationship equity. Yes. So we've built relationship equity with these 17 leaders. I love it. And the majority of them are not charging us to come and speak. Yeah. They're giving their gift away. Yes. And so because they're giving their gift away, we're able to give to the community you know what I love? and impact people in the community. You know what I love is that we don't know when when, when I need to sell a car mm -hmm. or sell a house, mm -hmm. right? Someone may say, boy, I, I need to buy a car today. Yeah. Or someone may say, boy, I need to just buy a house today. Mm -hmm. Who knows this relationship equity, mm -hmm. How they're saying, I need to leave a legacy. I need to give my gift away oh, yes. today. Yes. yes, and that's you. That's the balance. The universe yes. just just put it out there. They're gonna attract that person yes. to you. Yes. You know, and some people, are, you know, will say, Hey, listen, I need to get compensated. But more often than not, someone have set a goal and put themselves out in the universe. Say, yes. Boy, I just need to give back today. Yes. I'm looking for that person yes. to give back. Mm -hmm. Just the other day, I did a, a, on Facebook Live, I wanted to fill someone's gas tank up. Wow, that is awesome. I went out there, and um, and I, I tried to get the first person. He's like, uh -huh. hell, and I said it to, I said, they're not going to realize that there's still people out here that wants to just give with nothing mm -hmm. in return. Mm -hmm. The first person damn near cursed me out. Mm. No, I don't want no free gas. What do you talk about? I, wow. You see what I'm saying? But he didn't put it out there that he needed that anything. He needed it. Wow. That's fine. Wow. The next person I didn't even ask mm -hmm. came to me. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. imagine what she put out in the universe yes. that morning. Well, I wish I could just fill my tank up today and just. Yes. And yes. here I come. Yes. And we're all answers and questions to each other. Oh, I and like that. Damn, it's coming because you're here. I don't that's know. Good. They're just coming. That's today. good. So I, I appreciate that relationship equity mm -hmm. is very important mm -hmm. in building a business, running your thing like a business and not knowing what someone's putting out there and how you could be their answer. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. yeah, I just, I just wanted to, to oh, plug that no, in. No, thank you. That's yeah. good. Cause we are um, just believing God that we're going to get donors yes. and more donors because the more donors we have, yes. uh, the more people yes. we're able to, to touch, yes. the more lives we're able to impact. Yeah. And so we're putting it out. We've put it out in the universe. And we just believe yeah. that it's gonna happen. Yeah. We we right now we've been so tremendously blessed. Yes. Um, we have enough to cover our conference mm -hmm. without charging a dime. That's what I'm saying. So any any donation that we get will go to our community outreach. Yes. Will go to our missions that we do in Africa. Wow. Um, so yeah. So so that's one you of know our what? strategies. I'm just getting. I'm all hard. Usually I'm over here yelling and. and <laughs> but today it's it's real because you know I, there's a spirit that came with you and it's a spirit of just giving and gratitude and just believing and living free and being authentic and integrity and just doing yes. right the spirit of action that's flowing seven principles of becoming a wealthy Christian yes right yes. they're just, just keeping that flow going yes. and then I just did a live again today where th this hand is, is closed yeah, nothing goes out, but ain't nothing can come in. in. That's you know? true. And that's, that's true. what I love about it. So I know the moon is next, Mars is next. Yes. But what's happening in this near future? What can we expect from Dr. Doctor? I love yes. saying that. Yes. Dr. Yes. Tasha Parker. <laughs> what can we expect? Okay, well, actually, tomorrow mm. I am in, uh, my wife and I are in North Carolina. Yep. We are at the Infinity Diamond Club. Um, they do an annual conference. Yes. And so I'll be speaking on uh, financial principles mm. and just how to live a financially responsible life. Yeah. And then I'm also going to be speaking about spiritual gifts. Yeah. And so I believe all of us, no matter what your religion is, yeah. what your preference is, I believe we all have gifts inside yeah. of us. So I'm going to be uh, speaking about that over the weekend. I'm actually writing a book on spiritual gifts See? and I'm writing a book on living on purpose. So wow. that'll be coming out the next that. month. And um, then we've got this huge revival and conference that we've got Labor Day weekend. Yep. And, and uh, then we're out in Los Angeles. That's in Atlanta. And then yep. we're in L.A. Uh, next March mm. for another conference. Hopefully everybody. we can just so, come down the street because me and Siobhan will be living yes. there. You yes. Know? <laughs> yes. That sounds so awesome. put it out there right now, yes. right? Absolutely. I want to thank you for being who you are. Oh, and, thank and, you. And just, you know, 
living up to the potential that uh, the universe and God has created us inside. Because without you here helping millions, you know, I, you know, I, this flow right here, me and you together, yes. we're doing something to help others, right? Yes. And that's what it's about. So I want to thank you, Dr. Tasha, for coming in and blessing the comfort killers with this knowledge and this information, because I know it's going to help someone. I don't care if it's one individual, you, <laughs> you're who we're talking to, yes. you you are the one. Yes, get up and, and take action. Hello at thecomfortkillers.com. But you can read Tasha. I'm going to have her finish it out here and, and, and give, give us a word. Give us a good Yes, word. I just want to say thank you, uh, Stacy, with no E. There ain't no E. Man. Comfort Killers. Thank you for being you and for everything that you're doing. This Comfort Killers, this is awesome. Yes. And I want to speak over your life right now if I can. Yeah, absolutely. And just tell you that I believe that you're going to be blessed. Um, when we were talking off camera, I was telling you that it was going to be uh, quicker than you imagine yeah. and I just want to speak that over your yeah. life that somebody's going to drop some drop a check yeah. in your account that yeah. you're not expecting yeah. and you're going to be able to move faster you're going to be not able to touch millions but touch billions mm. and what you are doing is going to expand mm. be greater and bigger than you can even imagine. Wow. So I speak that over your life right thank now. Thank you. And I just want to say thank you so much to thank you, you so all. Much. Uh, Siobhan, thank you so much. Um, just, and Grant Cardone, thank you for yeah. Grant Cardone TV. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. this is amazing. Yeah. I appreciate the opportunity so much. I cannot wait for us to do something yes. else together again. It's coming uh, up. I, I don't know what it is, but I, I, I see it and, and I know that this is going to be a phenomenal. This is the beginning of, of uh, my mother pray with me on the way. I'm still, you know, I still call mama for yeah, prayer. Yeah. And she thanked God in advance for the next lag wow. of legacy. Wow. And so when you said legacy, that it, 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 it's. I got goosebumps. <laughs> I got, it's real. Yeah, it's so, real. It's, so, real. it's so, really happening. So, Thank so you. Let's continue to, to yes. impact lives and take care of our families and just, just do it. all that we're here to do. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, I am. Stacy A. Cross, and there is no E in my name, but I got goosebumps <laughs> on my skin. Be blessed, be great, and remember, remain uncomfortable. Thank you.